My Weller 25 is now nearly three decades old and it still works really well. In fact, the only thing it needs is some new tips. At the time of purchase, it would have been the equivalent of about £80 in today's money. So can an £8 soldering iron replace my £80 Weller 25? Hi and welcome again to Take It Out. Those of you who've been following me on Twitter will know that I've been away for a week or so due to the fact I've been undergoing some eye surgery. But I'm back now and I thought I'd bring you this small video on this, the Parkside soldering set or soldering station. It's the PL30B2 and it comes with a few extras included in the box. You can see the actual station there, nice little stand with the soldering iron. All looks nice in the pictures. We'll see what it's like when you get in the box. It's a 30 watt soldering iron. Comes with two soldering tips. One is pre-assembled and also four burning tips. Uh, two universal and one pointed. And a cone attachment as well. Soldering sponge and some solder. So it's quite a good little starter kit for somebody who's starting out. And at 30 watts, it's quite a decent size. You can do most soldering jobs. I wouldn't say it's really industrial standard, but uh, I'm not going to be doing any really heavy duty soldering. And this should suffice. And as it costs about the same as the price of the tips for my Weller, then I thought I'd pick it up and see what it was like. Now I bought this as usual at our local cheap stores. They have various deals on. And this is the first part of the set. It's a spring holder. And of course you put your soldering iron in there when it's hot. Keep it off the tabletop and stop you burning yourself and so on. And this fits into this, the base. The base is all plastic in construction. And it has a little drawer at the back here. And if I just get it open, you'll see it has for some reason a hole in the bottom. Not exactly sure why that is. I was assuming it was to catch the drips of solder that came down, but obviously not. It has these two fold out clip holders, and these can be positioned and turned in various places so that you can hold your PCB, or perhaps you have two wires you want to hold together without burning yourself, which is something I tend to do trying to hold two wires at once as well as solder. And you can quite easily hold them there and save yourself the burns. The spring clip is fitted in. There's a little slot just in the top here. Pin on the clip goes into. And then you just push it in, simple as that. And it's ready to take the soldering iron. The soldering iron itself, I'll put that to the side and we'll have a look at the extras that come with it. Now this is some ordinary solder, it's pre-flux, but it's ordinary solder. And then we have the sponge for wiping your tip on. Of course that needs to be wet before it's put in place. And then you have the tips. You have a straightforward screwdriver type tip. flat edge, slightly smaller flat edge, a wedge, and a cone. Now not all of these of course are soldering, most of them are actually for burning. The soldering iron itself has a, a cone or a pin type bit already fitted. There's a nice little guard at the bottom there preformed 3-pin UK plug and it just fits into the holder like this. Stays in there really well. It's quite a quite a weight to it actually and it uh, feels quite good in the hand. Next you have the obligatory contents for the draw of obscurity so off that goes. And that's basically what's all in the box. What I'm going to show you next is just some of the items I am going to need to solder up with this iron. First is a boundary microphone. Now this is quite a good boundary microphone, but unfortunately some of the connections inside have eroded over the years and are not working as well as they should. It works with a little which fits in. And as you can see I've got a piece of paper in there trying to keep the connections in contact with it. So I'm going to 
take it apart, take the connections apart, resolder them so that they fit in properly and hold the battery in place. So we put that to the side. We also have another little boundary mic. This is a Samson boundary mic. It's a USB boundary mic. Quite easy to get into. Single screw in the middle. And then we have these. I've got quite a few of these, but I've just brought the one. They are, of course, audio leads. These are mono leads for a PA amp. And what happens with these? They corrode and through movement and being pulled in and pushed out, the connections dry out or crack or break and they need to be all cut and resoldered. So I've got about four of those I need to do. I've got a few projects. There is one other project as well, which I'll show you in another unboxing video. Quite an old item. But for now though, thank you for watching.